For years, astronomers have been watching one of the brightest and most enigmatic stars in our night sky, Betelgeuse. A colossal red supergiant poised on the brink of collapse. We knew its end was inevitable. The question was never if, only when. And now, the James Webb Space Telescope has captured what no one was certain we would ever witness, the precise moment Betelgeuse began to explode. A stellar death. A shockwave sweeping through space. A raw, unfiltered display of the universe's power. This is not another deep space image for the archives. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event, the closest supernova humanity has ever recorded. And what Webb has revealed changes everything we thought we knew about the life and death of stars. Betelgeuse sits in the shoulder of the Orion constellation, but it is no ordinary star. More than 700 times the size of our sun and about 20 times as massive, it is a behemoth in its final chapter. For decades, scientists have monitored its erratic behavior, the swelling and shrinking, the sudden dimming, the massive eruptions of material into space. Then, in late 2019, it began to fade dramatically, sparking speculation across the globe. Was this it? Was the long-anticipated supernova finally beginning? Now, thanks to Webb's unmatched infrared vision, the mystery has deepened in ways no one expected. We are seeing real-time indicators of a collapsing star. Massive convective bubbles rising and bursting on its surface. Magnetic fields warping under unimaginable strain, and plumes of gas streaming into space at speeds that defy comprehension. For the first time in human history, we are watching the anatomy of a supernova unfold in real time, not a simulation, not a theory, but the raw physics of a star tearing itself apart, only 642 light years away. Unlike the distant supernovae we've studied in far off galaxies, Betelgeuse's proximity offers us a front row seat to the final act of a massive star. Its explosion will one day shine so brightly it could be seen during the day, outshining even the full moon. But the brightness is just the beginning. Webb's data is giving scientists an unprecedented opportunity to understand every step of the process, from core collapse to the forging of heavy elements like carbon, oxygen, and iron the very same atoms that make up planets, oceans, and life itself. In a sense, we are watching our own origin story in reverse. The explosion's shockwave has already begun to disturb the surrounding interstellar medium, sending ripples of high-energy particles outward, heating nearby gas clouds, and reshaping the halo of dust around the star. But Webb also detected something stranger, faint gravitational ripples, the kind predicted by Einstein but rarely observed in connection with a visible supernova. If confirmed, this would be the first time light and gravitational waves have been recorded from the same stellar death, opening a new chapter in our understanding of the cosmos. And then there's the question of what remains. When a star like Betelgeuse collapses, it can leave behind a neutron star, a city-sized sphere of ultra-dense matter, or, if its mass is sufficient, it can collapse entirely into a black hole. But Webb's readings hint at something more unusual, asymmetrical collapse, disrupted magnetic fields, and regions of plasma seemingly falling back toward the core. Some astrophysicists are daring to suggest we may be seeing the birth of a transitional object, something between a neutron star and a black hole, a type of cosmic remnant that until now has existed only in theory. From a safety perspective, Earth has nothing to fear. Betelgeuse is far enough away that its radiation will not harm us. But its explosion will ripple through our galactic neighborhood, subtly altering the structure of nearby dust clouds and changing the way light from more distant stars reaches us. In other words, our cosmic vantage point itself may shift in the decades to come. As Webb continues to collect data, it has uncovered another surprise, the chemical fingerprint of Betelgeuse's remains. Alongside familiar elements like carbon, oxygen, and iron, scientists have detected rare elements such as technetium and yttrium, forged only in the most extreme stellar environments. These exotic materials carry the story of the star's inner life, revealing how matter cycles from star to planet to living being. It is a chemical script, and Betelgeuse is reading it to us with its final breath. When the light from its explosion first left Betelgeuse, humanity did not yet exist. Civilizations have risen and fallen while it traveled across space to reach us. 
And now, in this brief moment, we not only see it, we understand it. Beetlejuice's place in Orion will not remain forever. One night, whether tomorrow or a thousand years from now, the steady red beacon will vanish. In its place, a great wound in the sky will bloom, a luminous cloud of gas and dust, expanding like a ghostly flower into the deep black of space. For centuries, it will drift and spread, a glowing scar marking the death of a giant. But in truth, it will be far more than the aftermath of destruction. It will be the beginning of something new. That cloud, shimmering with the last breath of a star, will carry within it the building blocks of worlds. Hydrogen and helium will mingle with heavier elements, carbon, oxygen, silicon, iron, all born in Betelgeuse's furious heart and hurled into the galaxy in a final, magnificent act. Over thousands, even millions of years, gravity will work patiently on this debris. Dust will cling to dust. Gas will collapse into knots. Within those knots, fusion will spark, and new stars will ignite. Around those stars, planets will form. And perhaps, on one of those distant worlds, life will rise to look up at its own night sky and wonder where it came from. This is the great cycle of the cosmos, not an endless tale of destruction, but of transformation. Stars die so that others may live. Worlds form from the ashes of giants. Life, if it exists anywhere else in the galaxy, owes its existence to the death of suns. The same is true for us. The James Webb Space Telescope has not merely captured an image of this cycle in motion. It has frozen a moment in an ancient, ongoing story that connects us to the heart of the universe itself. Every atom in our bodies, from the calcium in our bones to the iron in our blood, was forged in the core of a star that lived and died long before Earth was born. When we look at Betelgeuse, we are looking into a mirror, one that reflects not our faces, but our origins. Webb's instruments have shown us the truth of this cosmic drama with a clarity that no human eye has ever known. They have revealed the turbulence of Betelgeuse's outer layers, the colossal shockwaves racing through its atmosphere, the rare and precious elements cast into space. For generations, ancient cultures imagined such stellar deaths as the battles of gods or the work of divine beings. Now, science has taken us beyond myth, yet the reality is no less awe-inspiring. 642 years ago, Betelgeuse's final light began its journey to us. Back then, our ancestors were carving history into stone, building empires, telling stories by firelight. Entire civilizations have risen and fallen in the time it took that light to reach us. It crossed the void not just as a signal, but as a messenger, carrying with it answers to questions older than humanity itself. How do stars live? How do they die? And what comes after? In the cold vacuum of space, far beyond our reach, a titanic life has ended not in silence, but in a roar so vast it will echo through the galaxy for millennia. The shockwave will ripple outward, reshaping clouds of interstellar dust and gas, triggering new births even as it announces its own death. It is both a funeral and a genesis. And here on Earth, we are witnesses. We stand on a small, fragile world orbiting an unremarkable star, yet we are able to see across unimaginable distances and watch the life and death of suns. We are not merely bystanders, we are part of this process. The same cosmic fire that destroyed Betelgeuse once lit the furnaces that made us possible. And when our sun's time comes, billions of years from now, the cycle will continue. The elements of Earth, of oceans, of forests, of humanity itself, will scatter into space, waiting for the pull of gravity to gather them into something new. And now, we wait again. Somewhere out there, the next great transformation is already underway. Another star is trembling toward its last breath. Another light is already on its way to us, carrying a story we have not yet heard. The James Webb Space Telescope will be there to catch it. And when that light finally arrives, we will once again be reminded that the universe is still speaking, in the language of stars, in the rhythm of birth and death, and that we have only just begun to listen. If Betelgeuse has taught us anything, it is this, the sky above us is alive. Every pinprick of light is not a fixed jewel, but a moment in a story billions of years in the making. Some of those stories are just beginning. 
Others, like Beetlejuice's, are nearing their final chapter. And when a chapter closes, it is never the end. It is simply the turning of a cosmic page, written in the dust and fire from which all things